This is the 2022 Toyota Tundra Limited. If you're looking for a new pickup truck, then you'll love this bruiser of a Tundra. The Tundra Limited is outfitted with Toyota's pre-collision system, with pedestrian detection alert, dynamic cruise control, lane departure alert, and more keeping you and your cargo safe. A towing capacity of over 10,000 pounds will haul whatever you need with this truck. Updated digital features and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capabilities give you all the luxuries you'd want in a modern vehicle with the same trusted safety and strength of a classic Tundra. Today, we're taking CJ Stubbs for a spin. The 6'3 winger is in his third year with the Dogs, and the Pleasant Grove, Utah native ranks among the franchise's top 10 all-time leaders for goals, points, assists, and games played. CJ, how we doing, man? How's it going, Mitch? Doing well. Great to see you. Yeah. I'm Mitch Stewart, and this is Driving with the Dogs. Good to have you on here. Yeah, I appreciate you. you hopping in. We'll get you buckled up, and we'll take a little drive here. Sounds good. So back for year number three here in Roanoke. It's your fourth professional season overall with the Dogs. But I'm just kind of curious, what ended up kind of leading you to come to Roanoke in the first place back in 2019? Yeah, um, I had Jordan Carvalho on my team in Morrisville, and he uh, he kind of helped get me here. Um, kind of told me a couple things about the coach and the organization, and just kind of felt like it was a, the right fit for me, just how Brems coached and just the facilities here as well, and just, just a lot of good things that Carve, Carve had to say about Roanoke. So it's an easy decision at the, at the end of the day. Well, and it's funny that you mentioned Jordan Carvalho. You're now but the two of you are two of eight former Morrisville State players that have ended up making the journey to Roanoke. It feels like we almost have a direct affiliation yeah. back at SUNY Morrisville now. You're playing with Chris Vela and Nick DeVito here currently that were your teammates in college. How cool has that kind of been to see that transition from Morrisville to Roanoke with so many familiar faces down here in the Star City? Yeah, no, for sure it's nice. I mean, I played with uh, Vito for a few years. Um, couple years on the same line so there's a lot of familiarity there and then Vela I actually lived with Vela for two years I think we were roommates for one and then just same house for the next year but it's good to see you know Vela develop and the player that you know he is here and yeah it's just it's good to see it's good to have some familiar faces so but I wanted to ask you what you majored in at Morrisville State and maybe uh, if you've given some thought to it, what are kind of your plans or your hopes for maybe life after hockey? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. I got a, I got a business degree, four years. Um, I mean, I kind of have an entrepreneurial mind. I'd like to, you know, do something, work for myself, you know, start something. I mean, it's all I've kind of ever known. My dad's an entrepreneur. He's had a few companies, so I just kind of like to follow in his footsteps so yeah you guys had an awesome playoff run last season getting all the way to the president's cup finals you were able to be a part of that journey for the dogs but one thing i wanted to ask you about before i ask about all the returning players is just what that experience was like for you guys is you all were able to knock off the top two seeds and get to the championship series for the first time in franchise history yeah i mean it was pretty special uh such a good group of guys a lot of guys that really wanted it i mean we had it all the heart the passion just really the epitome of dogs hockey and i think we were the eighth seed but we just had so much so much confidence going in and I don't, I don't think we really let anything kind of bother us or, you know, mess with us, so. Well, one thing that I think was just astounding to see this season is all the returning faces from that group last year. 13 players from that final playoff roster returning for you all this season. What is that kind of like when you have all those guys back in the locker room and were there conversations kind of in the days weeks, months that followed between you guys as you all went your separate ways for the summer about coming back and trying to kind of finish up what you guys started last year? Yeah, I think there was probably a little bit of talk. Uh, I think for the summer, I think a lot of us really just kind of had to regroup mentally and physically. And I think, yeah, losing in the finals left a little bitter taste in our mouth. And I think we were all ready to come back and actually lift that cup at the end of the year. So I think it's pretty nice having all those uh, returning players because just easy to have one goal in mind now and we're all pulling on the same rope in the same direction so it's it's good 
So you're about to play in your 100th game as a dog. You just played your 100th game professionally a couple weeks back, but this weekend you'll hit the 100 game mark for Roanoke. You're climbing up the record sheets in a couple of different categories. But I was just curious, as far as regular season memories, outside of that President's Cup playoff run, is there kind of like one goal or one game that kind of sticks out to you as maybe one of your favorites or one that you kind of look back on fondly when you think about your time here in Roanoke? Um, I mean... Overtime goals are nice to score. I've had a couple of those against Fayetteville. I mean, we play them 17 times, so <laughs> one's got to go in, right? But, uh, uh, yeah, I would probably say, yeah, both the overtime goals against Fayetteville. I think one my rookie year and then one last year. So, yeah, those are good to always get the group hug at the end, so it's nice. I think it's fair to say that you either have – the best beard on the team or one of the best beards on the team I want to hear your response to to me saying that do you, do you think you have the best facial hair on the roster or or, <clears throat> or is there maybe kind of someone else that you think might be able to share that accolade or that you would bestow that upon uh, I mean there's some pretty good beards we got in the locker room I would say Fordo's come a long way with his uh <laughs> I think when Nens gets his going this is this is pretty mean looking um I think Jenny might be a sleeper when he, he gets his kind of grown out. He's got a good beard. Oh, uh, yeah. We got some good beards in the locker room, I'd say. <laughs> some good ones. I know Fordo caught some uh, caught some flack for his last year, so it's good to see that maybe it, it's stepping up a little bit. He's, he's getting there yep. eventually. We talked about kind of the, the start to the season, the team getting off to a good start, but you've been off to a strong one as well. Six points in your first eight games. You get that first goal of the season last Friday night against Macon. How do you kind of feel just about your own game and, and trying to, you know, get back into playing shape, get into the, the ebbs and flows of the season here early on? Yeah, um, I'm just trying to, you know, my body's feeling good right now, so I'm just trying to play play the right way and not really worry about, you know, maybe some points here and there, but just trying to play the right way, play dogs hockey, and I think it just kind of will speak for itself at the end of the day, so yeah, just trying to play my game play as best I can, as hard as I can, and just see where it takes me at that point. Who, who are you living with this season? I know you've probably lived with a few different players over your time here, but who are you living with currently here? Yeah, I'm living with uh, Janny and Dunks this year. Janny and Dunks. So you guys were actually all together down in Columbus, the, the Columbus Rail Yard Dragons or River Dogs, you know, whatever you want to call them. How was that experience like with them getting that year away from Roanoke, but again, a lot of familiar faces, and then you bring that experience back here last year? Yeah, um, it's good living with uh, some familiar faces. I mean, they're both good guys. Dunk's a great guy. I mean, I think we lived together in, for the summer after the season, but so we spent a lot of time together and did some fun things. But, yeah, it's good to kind of have a um, good group. We had a good group in the uh, with the Dragons, and so it's nice to have some of those players come back and lead us in the right direction. So, Well, we're about to pull back into the arena here, CJ. I just wanted to ask you, is there kind of anything that you think I left out or, or anything that you want to say to Dogs fans when they get the chance to watch this? Uh, I think you do a pretty good job, Mitch. I, don't think, you, I think you kind of are uh, underappreciated at times. I know your job is pretty hard, so I think... Uh, People got to understand how good of a job you do, so we appreciate you. Thank you, man. I, I really do appreciate that. You are the man, and I'm glad that after a few years here, fans will finally get to meet a little more of CJ Stubbs or, or hear a little bit more inside your mind. You uh, definitely are a big-time player here in Roanoke, and you do a lot of big things for us, so cool. appreciate you jumping Thank in with you, here. Mitch. Appreciate it. Have a good one, man. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it. Good luck yeah. to you guys this weekend on the road, all right? Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Driving with the Dogs is sponsored by Haley Toyota, the official ride of your rail yard dogs. Visit Haley Toyota online at HaleyHasItForLess.com and stay tuned for more episodes coming soon.